Hello, Sarah Madras here, founder of Esteem Builders Coaching. I'm a motivational speaker, author, and relationship therapist. So this is my passion because the research shows that the number one factor in overall health, your physical health, and your emotional happiness is connected relationships. When we feel connected and we feel loved for who we are, that is what helps us live longer, have happier lives, and a healthier body. When we don't feel connected and we feel lonely, loneliness literally kills. It shortens our lifespan. Um, it's a leading factor in addictions. It makes us feel like we're in this world completely alone. That leads to depression, anxiety, um, suicide ideation, and things like that. And so what I teach couples is how to have healthy and fulfilling and connected relationships so that you can go through life feeling happy and feeling love for who you are. So today what I'm going to be talking to you about is how to handle criticism and rejection. Because the reality is, is that not everyone is going to like us every second of the day. And when we feel rejected or when we feel criticized, it can send us into that shame spiral where we feel alone, where we feel like no one gets us, and uh, where we feel like we have to hide and that we're not worthy of being seen. And so today I'm going to teach you the four questions to ask yourself so that you can more easily rebound when someone has criticized or rejected you. So whether the rejection is a difficult breakup or whether the rejection is someone at work that you just don't get along with or whether the rejection is from extended family members, it can take a toll on our self-worth and plant seeds of self-doubt and make you question who you are. And so I'm going to teach you how to check in with yourself, the questions to ask yourself to check in so that you can recenter yourself and rebound from moments of rejection so that you don't spiral into shame and loneliness, okay? So I learned these through my own experiences handling rejection. <laughs> and for those of you that are new to me, I have worked really hard of rebuilding my self-worth and my resilience following my college relationship in which over time, um, slowly but surely, the rejection and the criticism that I received over that relationship just wore me down and stripped away my worth. And so I've learned these skills by rebuilding my worth. And so now I want to teach that to you. So just because I've rebuilt and created shame resilience doesn't mean that I don't get triggered too by criticism and rejection. Like it sucks. Like you want people to like you when you've invested in relationships and when you've given of yourself and cared about other people, you want them to like you back. And when they criticize you or reject you, it's hard to be like, well, why don't they like me? Why don't they see who I really am? Why are they rejecting me? So that's a human experience and it's hard for everyone to handle. So here's four ways to make it a little bit easier. So, I used this when one summer when I found myself outside underneath a tree sobbing in the rain. I had experienced tremendous criticism and rejection when um, I had shared a very vulnerable truth. And it was important to me to share that vulnerable truth because I believe that if we're going to share our amazing, awesome, happy success stories, that we, it's important to also share our stories of struggle because struggle is where we feel the most alone. And that's when we need to feel connected and know I'm not the only one who's ever gone through this. I'm not alone in this. And that this to normalize those experiences to know, Hey, Everybody struggles sometimes, and that's okay. And so I shared my story of struggle 
And I received criticism and rejection from that. Because when we share uh, our vulnerable stories, a lot of times it triggers fear or embarrassment or uh, insecurity, like it triggers other people, okay? So if that's ever happened, you feel free to comment and leave that story. I would love to connect with you on that. So I found myself one summer just sobbing outside in the rain. And so the first part of the process is to allow those emotions to flood over you instead of trying to repress them and be like, oh, this doesn't hurt me. Their rejection is fine. I don't care. I don't need people to like me. Like, <laughs> that's usually not the initial reaction. It hurts. It's painful when someone you care about or someone you've invested in criticizes you or rejects you or doesn't see you the way that you thought that they did. So allow that hurt to roll through you. Don't try to suppress it and hide it. Just allow it to roll through you and release it. And then ask yourself these four questions. So question number one is, is what you did or what you said in alignment with your values and beliefs? And if the answer to that is yes, then you move to the next question. If what you said or did is not in alignment with what you believe, then you have the opportunity to own that, to take ownership for it, to apologize, and to repair that break. To say, wait, what I did is not who I am and I need to fix that, okay? Then question number two, was I coming from a place of integrity and love? And if you answer yes to that question, then you like check it off and you go to the next one. If you answer no to that question of wait, what I did and how I acted was coming from a place of fear, then that's your opportunity to own that and to repair it. Question number three, would I have done anything differently? And you really have to think about that one and be in that calm place where you've let the tears flow and release, and you're really uh, able to say, do I wish I would have done something differently? And if the answer is yes, then you own that and you say, I'm okay with what I did because it is in line with who I am and what I believe. It came from a place of a love and integrity. There's this, you know, this one little part that I wish I would have done differently and I'll handle it that way next time. So then you can repair it that way. You've taken ownership and you've repaired it. If the answer is, no, there's nothing that I would have done differently. I came from a place of love and integrity. It was in alignment with my values and I wouldn't have done anything differently. Then you ask yourself, am I feeling this pain because I'm wanting them to like me? And that's how you know that you don't own that situation. You don't own someone else's reaction to your truth. You're allowed and it's encouraged to speak your truth kindly and unapologetically and other people's reactions to you, you can't own. And you're able to release that. And so if you go through those four questions, it's one way to keep you accountable of like, are there uh, things that you need to take ownership of and repairs that you need to make to those relationships? because of that situation, so it keeps you accountable. It also keeps you centered and lets you know, wait, I am, you know, I am okay with how this went down, and I can be okay with it even when the other person's not okay with it. So for example, if you say, I am not okay with sending my kid to a private school, and another person says, oh my God, that's ridiculous. If you have the means, you should send your kid to a private school because that's a better education. And you're such a bad mom because you're not sending your kid to a private school, blah, 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 blah. You're allowed to say and have your belief that you don't believe in private school. And you don't have to change that or feel bad or feel shame or believe that you're a bad mom or parent because the other person would do things differently, okay? So this, these four questions have allow you to stay accountable in case you need to do any ownership and repairs. 
and it allows you to recenter yourself and be confident within who you are of, hey, I am in alignment. I came from a place of love and integrity. I wouldn't change anything. And it's okay for your reaction and your beliefs to be different than mine. And then you can just release it. There's such, it provides such a peace and such a confidence and conviction. Like then you feel really confident in your convictions. Like you feel really solid and confident in your actions that you did. Cause you're like, no, wait, you may think I did something wrong because it doesn't align with your beliefs, but I don't think I did anything wrong because it aligns with my beliefs. It was from a place of love and integrity and I wouldn't change anything. And that's how you're able to let it go and come back to resilience instead of spiraling into shame. Okay. And then from this experience, like when any time you have experiences of criticism or rejection, find the gift in that. And the gift in that is often that it's revealed another layer of truth about that relationship with that other person. So if they're criticizing you or if they're rejecting you, that is an opportunity to learn more truth of, oh, we don't believe in the same things and that's okay. Then I won't have a discussion about private school with that person <laughs> because they criticize and we don't share those beliefs. So you can shift the dynamic between that relationship because now you know a deeper level of truth. So think of it like an onion. You just peeled away another layer of the onion and now you know more about your relationship with that person. And honestly, that's where the pain comes from of the rejection is because you felt the relationship was closer and that they saw you for who you were and they saw you for your beliefs and accepted you for your beliefs. And then when you had that moment of rejection, it's that pain and sadness of, oh, they actually don't accept me for who I am. They don't see the best in me. And that's where the pain comes from. But from that pain, just realize that that's new information. Now you have more truthful, you can have a more truthful interaction with them because you know the truth of how they really feel and see. And their stuff is based, how they see you is actually based on their perceptions, their experiences, their traumas, things like that. So just because they see you that way doesn't make it true. And that's what the four questions are for, is so that you can find your truth. That's their truth about you. And you have your own truth about you. And that's what you use those four questions to do, is to bring you back to your truth and to be able to release those feelings of rejection and, you, and release that pain and that suffering when someone else sees you differently than how you see yourself. When someone else doesn't understand you the way your actions and the things you intended. Okay. So it's a beautiful way for you to seek new truths about relationships and to understand the truth about yourself. Okay. So remember the four questions are, is what I said or did in alignment with my values and beliefs? Is what I said come from a place of integrity and love? Would I have done anything differently? Am I feeling this pain because I wish they would love and accept me? Okay, so try it out. Comment below, let me know how it goes for you. Share this video with others. The more we learn and grow together, the stronger our relationships are and the happier and healthier our lives are, okay? So share it, pass it along so that we can all learn this stuff together. All right, thanks so much. Join me next time. Bye-bye.